Jeffrey, it's great to have you with us. And um, what's your general sense on, on what's happening in the equity world right now? You know, I think one of the investing themes that's struggling to come forth here in 2024 is a recovery in the manufacturing sector. The market's still very focused on very narrow tech leadership this year. But I think with what we've seen in the Purchasing Managers Index, it, really around the world in January was this lift out of recession, 50.0, okay, right at the dividing line between growth and recession and manufacturing. But that's key because it's been in a recession for 16 months. So we could see better growth in some of these sectors that benefit from economic momentum and maybe less of an emphasis on rate cuts being the only driver of enthusiasm in the stock market, given how much pushback there's been by many central bankers on when those rate cuts are likely to begin. Okay, so a resilient economy coming to grips with the reality that maybe things didn't end up being as bad as them had thought. Yeah, exactly right. And I, I think one of the areas that we're seeing some excitement is in this industrial space and even in those areas that feed into it, like um, materials and energy, those stocks haven't done very well this year. But I think you're seeing some support now for energy. I'd note that the Lunar New Year uh, in China showing more travel than many expected, really picking up there uh, despite the overall lackluster Chinese economy. And that feeding into the world's demand for energy, that could be a big positive this year, particularly for Canada's market. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because I'm looking at the performance for energy so far this year. It's down in uh, the stock um, uh, sub-index for, for the TSX. It's off close to 2%. Our materials subgroup is down uh, more substantially, uh, and our financials index is also in the green. So between those three sectors, it helps to explain why our, our, our Canadian benchmark is, is basically uh, flat to positive in 2024, whereas, as I mentioned, the S&P 500 is up more like 5% with a lot of that tech momentum continuing right now. You, you think the TSX, by comparison, looks like a, a possibly attractive market to investors? Yeah, I do. I, I think it's time for a little bit of a catch up there is the Magnificent Seven in the U.S. very dependent upon an outlook for a flood of liquidity on the back of rate cuts. Uh, and, and I'm not sure we're going to get those uh, or as, as early or as many as the market had been anticipating. I mean, if you take a look, we've gone from pricing in maybe six or seven rate cuts in the U.S. to now four or five. In Canada, that's gone from six to just three now as of this morning. So the whole world in terms of how much liquidity is expected this year is pulling back a little bit. And that's going to be, I think, a bit of a drag on the valuations of some of those tech leaders, whereas you've got this more resilient economic backdrop, and I think that could really pay off. You know, one of the one of the other positives here is just taking a look at the inventory levels across the uh, the manufactured goods space really come down quite a bit. I know that might be somewhat due to the uh, supply chain challenges we're seeing with the Panama Canal and the Suez Canal, but even setting that aside, I think that suggests a production pickup here in the coming months that might surprise investors. Now, it's interesting um, because um, th there's a sort of a general belief that lower interest rates is good news for the stock market. Um, you mentioned what some of the expectations are now for uh, interest rate cuts in Canada this year. Um, there's actually a reasonable amount of evidence that in this period when you're moving from uh, rate hikes to rate cuts that the, the stock market can do well. But as for what happens when you start to see those rate cuts, assuming we see them this year? What does history tell you about what happens actually to the stock market? Yeah, a little bit of uh, uh, buy the rumor and sell the news. History shows, particularly in Canada, stocks have been very mixed after the rate cuts begin in the past. The stock market reaction in Canada over the first 180 days, so six months following the start of rate cuts, is very mixed. In three periods, stocks were up. That was 98, uh, 2003, and in 2020. And in three periods, uh, 2001, 2007, and 2015, they were down. And the paths were all unique. It doesn't seem that rate cuts have led to any consistently reliable outcome for stocks. Do you think then, based on your earlier comment about the lagging performance from some of those sectors that are really influential in Canada, that this could be one of those moments where, where you do see some outperformance just because they've been trailing some of the technology companies? Or we'll have to wait to see what happens? I, I think you could. It's not just that they've been they've been lagging. Obviously, uh, that they do have attractive valuations. But I do think the momentum globally is shifting from services back towards manufacturing after 16 months. Canada stock market is uniquely tied to natural resources, and so a stronger outlook for global manufacturing may be more relevant to Canada stock market than rate cuts intended to encourage domestic demand alone. And again, I think this uptick in the global manufacturing PMI in January, the first time in a year, manufacturing's moved out of recession 
it could be particularly uh, a positive for, for Canada's equities looking forward. And what are you watching most closely with other markets around the world? Um, you know, when you look at the sort of the, the opportunities worldwide right now, are, are there similar uh, markets to, to that argument you're making for some of the Canadian indexes, that uh, sub-indices that could outperform? Yeah, I'm looking at price to cash flow as one of my favorite metrics. These uh, businesses that are starting to see a turnaround in cash flow momentum, but are very attractively valued. Uh, many stocks in Canada fall into that category, but there are quite a few in Europe as well and in Japan. I'm particularly excited about the Japanese market this year, one of the best performing markets in the world, whether you measure it in dollars or yen. A lot of momentum there. Again, another manufacturing-based economy that's showing some real signs of life here in 2024.